Hey everybody, it's Gunnar Hernio. You're listening to WGO Podcast, Culbertson Edition. Uh, last week, I, uh, we posted two um, episodes of WGO Podcast Special Edition, Culbertson Track, uh, Editions 3A and 3B, and it was uh, clips from uh, a Zoom meeting that I attended, um, and it was my questions and the answers to my questions and my speaking at that um, at that meeting, at the end of that meeting, um, I uh, shut my mic off and my my video off, but I was still listening to what was uh, what was being spoken in the meeting. And um, there was a discussion there that happened at the end that I felt it was uh, very alarming. And um, I want to uh, I want to take a moment to go through it and uh, and let everybody listen to it because I'm concerned that uh, there's something uh, happening here that's not right and. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't. I don't feel like I have really have the the proper training to to say what I hear sounds like collusion, uh, which is illegal, and sounds like fraud, which is also illegal. But um, I want to share it because I'm concerned that there's uh, there's something uh, not right about how this has come about, because the conversation turned between the. Uh, Mohawks the Bay Quinney Chief, Donald Aaron Merkel, some of the counselors, um, the uh, the lawyer for the Mohawks the Bay Quinney, Alan Pratt, and uh, the uh, the owner and sounds like the executive um, um, poll the, the poll officer for the for the vote for one feather, and um, also uh, I believe the. Uh, um, Bank of Montreal executive was involved in the conversation as well. And they they began a conversation to talk about how they would get a yes vote, how they were gonna get yes. And it would seem to me that the federal government proposed, and, uh, proposed uh, put a proposal on the table and the Mohawks of the Bay Quinney Bank Council has moved this forward as a vote for the people to make a uh, balanced and uh, fair decision on whether they want to want to accept this offer or to decline it. And they structured it in a vote, which is contrary to lots of things, including all of our customs and laws and tradition and a co conflict with our traditional government, which is the rightful decision-making government in the, on these lands. But nonetheless, that they're still, still being purported or claimed as a democratic process. But when, they, when the, the local governance structure is asking for a vote, um, they're supposed to take a nonpartisan position and not go out of their way to figure out how they would get a yes vote. And that's exactly what they were, what seems like they're trying to do. And I recently seen that they, uh, they posted that they're going to do an extension to the, um, to the vote, give it till October 16th, I think, because uh, it was supposed to be uh, September 25th was the vote time. However, in this conversation, you'll hear them talk about if they can't get a yes vote or if they don't think they're going to get enough votes in to be able to get a yes, what they will do to, to, to get that. And one of the things that they said they would try is to get an extension of the vote or if they got a high enough percentage of votes in that they would, they would propose to the federal government that they would have a second vote so they could get the numbers up that they needed to get the yes. So in that regard, it sounds like they're trying to um, uh, have a like a, I'm I'm a loss of words. It sounds to me like they're trying to influence the outcome, which is uh, collusion and which is illegal in accordance to the Canadian law. Also, they talk about how they mailed out all the mail outs to all of the addresses that they had. So it was like 6,400 of the 80. 8,200 or 8,400 uh, uh, of the eligible voters and that 400 of them were to returned because the addresses were wrong and then uh, the rest went out. So some 57 or whatever, 58, uh, 5,800 um, votes went out. Now they're saying that they're trying to, in the official note, which is different than what their conversation is here about here, uh, they said that it was uh, that they the reason they were extending it so that they could get enough packages out to everybody, like to more people. But they've already exhausted their uh, 
the list of addresses they had. So it's actually impossible for them to put more out unless they're going to actively search out other addresses, uh, which means that the council would have to interfere in the voting process to do so. It's also a discussion there where the chief asks if, uh, if they can vote a copy um, or if their copies can be made of ballots to take to people and they're told no, they can't do that, but that the uh, feather, one feather would bring, uh, bring ballots. And then the chief asks if they can, if people can go and take those ballots to people that with the mobility issues and fill out the forms for them, fill out the ballot for them, and then take it in and, and register that ballot as a vote. Um, and this is a part of that conversation about getting a yes vote. And then the chief asked if chief and council could go and do that on the, for those people and be their witness and, and put it in the vote. And to that, in my mind, uh, is a, clearly is an issue of uh, interference in the, in the ballots and in the vote process. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear that the chief says that they've done this in the past. Well, I'm only aware of one other vote in the past, and that was uh, and that was a plebiscite vote. But he says uh, sometimes we have to do this, or sometimes we've done this in the past. So it makes me it makes me question previous votes of of uh, the chief and councils uh, because maybe they've been skewing the vote with these uh, mobility votes that they're uh, planting uh, planting b ballots in. I don't know. It just seems. Uh, it seems uh, inappropriate or corrupt to me. And, uh, so I just wanted people to know about that. And I was advised by lawyers not to do that, but, but rather to uh, confront the council and ask them if that was their intention to skew the vote or whatever. And uh, I just felt like that was playing in and participating in the system. And it's not something that I want to do. I, I don't hold a chief of councils of having any legitimate authority or power or, or right within our territories. Um, they're just simply an administrative body of federal funding um, that, that is being funneled through them. That's it. They're not governance. And uh, so I don't want to engage them really, uh, but I thought I'd put it out there and maybe people will be surprised to hear that or maybe it'll confirm some thoughts or ideas that they already had. But it seems to me that the, uh, the Culbertson track vote is complete fraud and uh, it should not be considered or accepted. And I don't have a way to uh, to say that I, to, that I contest, other than to publicly say I contest. Uh, this is uh, this is wrong. So I'll, so there you go. I'll provide that to you, and uh, I'll do with it as you wish. Maybe there's uh, lawyers that want to uh, take them to task, and maybe there's people that are willing to make a donation large enough to be able to hire lawyers to do it. You know, we're not talking a hundred dollars. We're talking you know ten or twenty thousand, but uh, it should be something to consider. Um, I don't have those kind of resources, and um, but that's not not for me to do. So anyway, so there's so there's that. Um, I've got a couple more elders to interview yet, and that I spoke with recently that, I, that I'm gonna interview and talk more about the Culberson Tract and about our lands and about what they think is our next steps and what we should do. And and so far, I haven't heard any of them say that we should follow along suit with what Bank Council and what the Indian Affairs is saying. So um, so there's that. Have a great day. Enjoy. So we'll, uh, if there is, are there other questions? Speak up if you have them or put your hand up on your screen so I can see. So we have 13 on the call. Yeah, there's two band members on the call or three on the call. I think we have 10 of our team on the call. Are we going so, to have... Don't so go door to door, Chief. Well, I, I again, I, I, I can do some. I'm, I've been calling people on the phone um, uh, to ask. I've them been to trying to door. do my best. I don't know, Linda. What are you doing? And Ted, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm Josh, doing my very best. I think it's up to the, you guys now. Ted, Linda, do you have any comments? I put the bug in. I put the bug in. Thank I you, Tim. I appreciate it, Tim. Thanks for your thoughts, and uh, I've been doing what I can on my part. I do have a full-time job with family and grandkids, so I don't know if I'll make, have time to go door-to-door, -door, that's for sure, but if we need to hire uh, somebody that can do that for us, then, then that'd be great. I have no problem doing that. 
Thank you. I, I would like the council to come in if we can get, uh, again, the problem is so many people have cell phones now, so you almost have to go door to door because there's no cell phone directory that I'm aware of um, to call people up and talk to them. So you have to try to catch them home and hope they're not busy or, you know, having company in the middle of their dinners. Okay. Thank you for joining Stacia. Take care. So, best. Okay, but Stacia, we all, good to see you. Okay, Linda, what are your what are your thoughts? Are you well, still I've on? Been, yeah, I'm still on. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, yes. I've been calling people, all my relatives in the States. I've been calling all my people, all my family, um, answering their questions and helping them with their ballots or if they're doing electronic. So I am trying to do my best. I am been going door to door here in the community. Thank you, Linda. And okay, I will go, I, I will go door to door. I've been talking to people all the time to ask them to vote for it. But uh, what are your total guaranteed votes on that? I would I would say there there have been at least four hundred said they would come out and vote yes on on the on the uh, the twenty um, fifth. But I haven't had it again. We we have meetings. My my day schedule is pretty full, so I just have the evening time. Yeah, and I have a lot of my people who uh, don't like the computer or don't deal with paperwork, so they're doing it on the day of. Yeah, like so, gonna, so, they want to walk in and do theirs. Yeah, so a lot okay. of a lot of the elders that want want to uh, mail it in, they just need some help to fill it out, and they mark their ballot, but the, the the affidavit part, and you know, to witness and to fill it out, and we have them witness it and witness their signature that they signed it and put it in the envelope, then they mail it away. But again, because it has to go to Vancouver, some of them are probably just going to bring their ballot to the poll. The green ballot that they got in the mail, they're just going to bring it with them to the poll and hand it in there. Like yeah, I, and they can do that. Like I, like, like I said the first time, I want to secure a yes vote. Well, I do too because this is an opportunity that I don't think is going to be there for a long time, and, and it's and, probably uh, the only opportunity to go door to door. And, and we, we don't have had, too much time left. Yeah, and we've had we've had extensions uh, from Kimmet now twice because there's timelines that were involved in how we're supposed to deal with him because he wants certainty too. He just doesn't want to be hanging. As, when are the Mohawks going to make up their mind? You know, and, and you know what, ha- and the the concern about somebody running a pot shop there. Well, there's nothing stopping somebody that has a pot shop now from going to hit him and say, "Sell me the land. I'll give you more money." True, but the, he has to realize that we have a process as well. Yeah, but 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 the problem, and, and of course, he's trying to uphold this process. But if, if at some point in time, he, if, if things don't materialize, then I guess how long is he going to be willing to left hanging? Because uh, there have been times when he's been very frustrated with the process. I mean, Alan, can you speak to that? Oh, definitely. He's been very frustrated. Um, um, I, I think he's counting on uh, counting on us getting getting this thing through and and having an orderly an orderly uh, transition, uh, prompt payment. Now, if if the vote falls short, we're going to have to. Well, I guess Jordan and I are going to put our heads together over the next week and sort of come up with uh, a plan, I guess, uh, a contingency plan in case the in case the vote doesn't go through. Um, because I I think we'll all be bar- barraged with questions: what what happens well, next? And uh, well, then we'll have to have, guess, we'll have to know, have the crown is not going to said that this is the best they can do. They went beyond their what they would normally do. To, I, to, yeah, to I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't expect they'll be open to renegotiating, but I think they'd be open to having another try, especially if the numbers, if it looked like, if it looks like we have a strong vote in favor, like 90, 80 or ninety percent in favor, but we didn't get the numbers out. I think they would accept the notion that we could try again, and and this time we'll, you know, we'll try to try to do a better job of of getting, you know, getting the word out and and hopefully the covid situation might permit uh, but, more more meetings that kind of thing. But what happened when we had an election where we had one of the the councillors names got left off the ballot when we had to go back to the membership the second time with the vote some of well I've already voted and that so I'm not going to vote again. And so oh, it brother. just creates and then there was a lot of confusions with a vote and then there was an, there was an appeal about the process being valid. And yeah. so that 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 so that's it would we need to get out and get get the people to vote yes in this one this first round. Yeah, no, I I agree. I that's that's the immediate challenge. I mean, I I'm not discouraged by 
the numbers that Lawrence gave us today. I mean, I, if somebody had said to me that a week ahead of their voting day, we'd already have 700 uh, votes in the bag, so to speak, I'd, I'd say, oh, that's, that's a good start. Lawrence, do you it's, have it's, the, it's, the it's, exact it's, numbers? It's not a comfortable start, but it's a, it's a good start. <laughs> Lawrence, the, the, numbers you have posted, the numbers I posted to you for uh, as of the end of the day yesterday. And what were those numbers again? Uh, they're in the chat bar there. Let me just take a look. Yes. I, get to the chat bar. I, I think it was a 700 between between electronic and um, and mail-in. So, chat bar. Uh, Carol, let me just take a look online. No, I don't see it in the chat box. Yeah, I posted it there this morning. I'm, I'm on the road this morning, Chief, so I posted it there knowing I wouldn't have immediate access to it. So. Lisa, can you look in the chat box to see if you can find it? I did, Chief. I don't see it. So, Chief, as of there's 360 um, electronic ballots right this as of right this second. And then I, uh, if I recall, the uh, mail-in ballots were 381, I think. What is that? 381. Yes. Yeah. the goal. That's 740. Yeah. Uh -huh. But we've got a whole week yet to go. So, you know, if we could double that in the next week, we'd be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and if we have if we have nice weather next Saturday, not maybe maybe not beautiful, perfect weather, but enough weather that people aren't kept indoors by heavy rain or something like that, we we, we may get a lot of in person votes on the day. But you have you have two campaigns going against it, and so you've heard those voices yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chief, is there any, I see, I'm just looking on, uh, I don't know if this is Seth's website, but the Real People's Radio site, it's very interesting, um, and the Real People's uh, Media site as well, and if we could, uh, I don't know, respond to any of the... Uh, well, I, I think you should, if it's out there, then you should respond. Yeah, we can. There's also a podcast. Uh, I don't know if uh, you'd be happy to participate in that. I'd be happy to participate in a in a podcast and answer some questions. Well, they, I I would have to have authorization from the council because this is the process that they've all laid. So it would be that yeah, way right. I go to council. But your job is to take questions where you make yourself available to answer the questions. How how long do we have till uh, voting day? The polls it's a week close today. The yeah, polls the close. Poll. At, the polls close on uh, September the twenty fifth at eight o'clock at night at Quinney Mohawk well, School. Okay, that's, about, that's about a week away. Yeah. Exactly a week. Exactly next Saturday. A week away. Uh, next Saturday. Okay, so so why can't we just get uh, an extension for two weeks, which which is uh, plenty enough time for everybody to make a a real good wise decision. And, and that'll give time Al, 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 some, Al some, that. some people to canvas oh. the territory to to guarantee a yes vote. I'm sure Kim and it wouldn't mind two more weeks. Like Alan, can you maybe four, six months well, is too let, long. Let, two uh, weeks let is me not. Do, that let me, gives us another two weeks. Uh, you know, I, I, I need to think about that. Um my gut feeling is that once you started a process, you kind of stuck with it. But uh, I, yeah, I don't know. The, legally, there's a there's a legal there's sort of a legal component to it, and there's a political component to it. And I I can see council getting a lot of political grief if you if you sort of in the middle of a process change. I mean, let's say let's say okay, it was a banned let, election, and you, and you okay, and you postponed so the date of the banned let's election. Get council, let's get council uh, getting a yes vote for us. Well, the council, I, the, I'm going to work at it, and Ted, I think, is going to work at it, when he goes, and Linda is definitely working at it, and I think Josh is, too. Uh, Josh is not on the call, but he I, I, he's assured me that he's promoting it. And I'd like to thank everybody for doing that. And I thank you, too, uh, Tim, for you doing your part to promote it. I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Chief. So were there any other questions? Yeah, I just want to thank um, Tim for being on today. I appreciate all your questions and your concerns. And um, uh, and I know that you are also doing your part at your end with your family. So I appreciate that, Tim. Thank you, Linda. 
Ted, did you have any comments? No, I'd just like to thank everybody once again for, for today. The presentation went well. And it's always good to hear from our community members. I'll be glad when we can meet face-to-face -face again yeah. under normal conditions. And, uh, yeah, I'll just continue to promote this as well. I'm not going to beg people to vote, but I will ask them to. You know, I do answer their questions, and I am in favor of it for sure. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. So let, let, let's close our meeting then with a... With it, as we turn down our council fire, we're not extinguishing our fire, we're just turning it down until we have our next meeting and final meeting, which is on the 21st. Is that correct, Lisa? It's Tuesday evening. Yes, that's Tuesday evening at 6.30. At 6.30, so 6.30 is our next call. And if you have others that haven't heard, uh, please get, and if they don't have a package, tell them not to wait to get one in the mail. Phone the band office, we can get a package to them um, and I guess because of the short time frame with a week away, we're not confident that if they haven't received uh, a package from one brother, they'd be able to get the ballot back there in time to Victoria, BC. And so it would be best if they could vote online or just come to the poll and vote. And I don't know, Lawrence, would there be any way, I guess, that they could get a, um, a ballot made up that you'd sign that they could bring to the poll, um, or, or it, what happens if, if, if they don't have their mail-in package and they have mobility problems, they want to just fill it out and have somebody else bring it to the poll. If they yeah, don't the, have the package. The ballot package can be delivered to us by anybody. Chief. It doesn't have to come specifically from the electorate. Yeah, but if they haven't received it from you, they can't use the ones, that, the photocopies that we give at the office. That's <clears throat> Yeah, you, and you shouldn't be photocopying the ballot and releasing it. The no, we're, no, we're not. We're not. But, yeah, but so, you know, the day of, if there are some voters in community who have mobility issues, we will have extra packages with us that we can uh, release for that voter to fill out and have brought back. Okay, so somebody could pick up a package and take it to somebody with the affidavit and bring it back, right? That, correct, yes. Okay, good. We, good. That's good to know. Because yeah. there are some people that have mobility problems and have it, it's really challenging to get to the poll. Understood. Yeah, it's, and it's then, not. And they could have ballot. somebody fill it out that they know and trust, and it, uh, they can mark their ballot. It would, it would be to yeah. witness that they're the signature on the affidavit. Now, should that, is there anything wrong with the chief and council witnessing those things? Or they ask us to do it? No, should no, we, no. no. That, any, no. Any, any, any other witness is fine who's of age? Yes. Yeah, okay. Because sometimes people will ask you to do that. Yeah, which that's totally yeah. acceptable for sure. Okay, that's good. So we'll uh, turn down our council uh, fire today. Uh,